Hello internet and welcome to my channel. I'm Hendrik Hjelte and this is the story about building a foldable boat. In this episode we will prototype the folding mechanism of the boat. I bought a small piece of 7mm plywood in my local hobby store. I'm drawing out the fold between the railing and the bottom of the boat and only a small subsection of it. The pieces that actually meet when you do the fold turned out to be way oversized when I did it this way. But that's why you do prototyping so you learn. Now you can see that the pieces are starting to take shape. In the top you can see the bottom of the boat and then below that you can see the side of the boat. And then you have the two covering pieces below that. The folding joint between the side of the boat and the bottom of the boat has a curve to it. Over the 60 cm that the plywood is, I need to bend the batten 1 cm up. All the parts are gonna have this same bend, so I need to do this operation multiple times. I need to remember to get myself a much bigger batten when I'm gonna do this on the full size boat later on. When the fold is extended, there needs to be an interlocking square wave patterns to the edges. The amplitude of this pattern needs to be 1 cm and that's what I'm measuring out right now. One of the main reasons to do this prototyping work is to make sure that these interlock in the correct angle when the fold is extended. It is surprisingly easy to draw otherwise quite complex curves with a simple button and some clamps. I'm now continuing to draw on the sawtooth pattern this time I'm measuring out 10 cm between the rising and the falling edge of the pattern. It was a very good idea to have these two parts just beside each other. That way I can draw both of them at the same time with a square, making sure that all the edges line up perfectly. Now I'm just marking out which squares to remove to make the interlocking pattern. I now use a jigsaw to saw out all the pieces. This first piece is 5 cm and it ended up not being used. The piece I'm sawing out now is the bottom of the boat. When I'm gonna do this for real, I either need to measure in another way or make sure that I account for the curve of the blade. For a prototype like this, it doesn't matter at all, so I just ignored it. Now I'm sawing out the side of the boat. I will later on fix the top railing so that when it folds it actually works better. Now I'm sewing out the covering pieces with the interlocking patterns for the side and the bottom of the boat. It turned out I oversized these pieces. I should probably have made them 6 or 7 cm wide so that they overlap with the side or the bottom about uh, 4 to 5 cm. I should also have the same overlap with the tarp as I have with the covering piece. I'm now sewing out the interlocking pattern. I think the 10 cm pattern turned out quite good. What do you think? Give me a comment down below. It might be easier to make the pattern a bit larger because it's less edges to make sure that they fit well. It's the curve of this edge that makes the plywood bend and gives the boat its shape when you extend the fold. There will be quite a lot of force on the covering pieces when the boat is extended, so I need to figure out a very good way of fastening them to the side of the boat. In the next episode I will probably try to fasten them in some different ways and seeing how well they work. To refine the curve of the pieces I put them together and go over them with the block plane. Then I round over the edges a little so they don't cut into the plastic tarp. Now I'm cutting out a 60 cm by 10 cm strip of tarp to be used in the fold. When I'm gonna do the real part, I think I'm gonna use 12 cm instead of 10 cm to make sure that I can get the 5 cm overlap on both sides and the 2 cm middle part for the fold. The heavy duty PVC tarp I'm using is about 1.4 kg per square meter and that's about 1.2 millimeters in thickness. I was surprised about the amount of force it actually took to cut this tarp with a brand new blade in my box cutter. I will use this tarp for both the front and the back and the hinges of the boat. And to be able to do that I need a good way to join them together. I think heat might be the best way. 
Do you have any good ideas? I'll try to test out some different ways of doing it in the next video. Here you can see me putting the tarp over the curved pieces where the joint is. This was surprisingly easy. I didn't think it would conform this good. I'm stapling down the tarp. This is probably a good way of going, but I need to make sure that I get some stainless staples before I try this for real. One thing I did wrong here was to not mark out the overlap in advance. I need to do this on the wood to make sure that the overlap is correct on both sides. When I'm doing this for real later on, I should probably avoid opening it like this before I get the covering pieces on to avoid any unnecessary strain on the staples. The interlocking square wave pattern turned out a bit uh, tight on a few places, so I'm refining it with a file. The fit here ended up way too tight. When I do this for real, I'm gonna make it way more loose. Now it was just a lot of trial and error to make sure I got the correct stick out of the interlocking covering pieces. With 2 cm of tarp in the joint, the best stick out was 1 cm for the lower part and 2 cm for the higher part. For the prototype I'm just fixing everything down with screws so I can change anything if needed. After testing that everything works as expected with the full prototype, I'm gonna split it up into two pieces and I also fix the railing height. I split it up into two pieces to have one for each side of the full prototype of the boat. Now I'm drawing out the middle of the boat. It should have a small curve, but it's so small that in this small subsection it's not noticeable, so I will just ignore it. Now I'm sawing out the pieces for the middle of the boat. The middle of the boat will be three pieces of plywood thick. Two of the pieces will be seven and a half centimeters wide, and the last one I made oversized to cover the joint. The covering pieces that will hold the tarp to the bottom of the boat is straight in this case and goes into the groove in between the oversized piece and the middle of the boat. And then I'm just making everything into 30 cm strips to match the sides of the boat that I just made. And now I'm all done with the saw for this prototype. Since the middle piece of the boat is so narrow, I will just make one piece of tarp that is encapsulated by the middle of the boat and then attaches to each of the bottom sides of the boat. I will make the tarp 30 cm long and as wide as the middle part plus the two covering pieces. I now cut out a piece of the tarp using a steel ruler and a sharp blade. In a coming video I will need to make a prototype uh, centerboard box to make sure that it can fold up correctly and that the seating area when extended will keep the boat rigid. I'm now marking up the overlap for the tarp and the covering boards on the bottom of the boat so I know where to place it. And then I'm marking up the tarp to make sure I place the middle of the boat in the exact center. After it has been placed correctly I use the stapling gun to lock it in place. The piece I'm attaching now is the one that you will see from the inside of the boat. I'm now gonna attach the middle of the boat to the bottom of the boat. And this will be done with one centimeter gap in between. To make sure I place it in the correct position I've drawn a reference line of the bottom of the boat that I can use as a guide. Now that we have attached everything together, you can see that everything just flops around and that's what the last pieces of covering boards and the middle parts are for. Now I'm attaching the next part of the middle of the boat. This is the part where the covering boards will go up and lock against to make sure that we can't overextend the fold. And here I'm attaching the covering boards using the tarp and the reference line as a guide. Right now the tarps and the covering boards are exactly the same length and that means that when you apply a lot of pressure it actually over rotates a little bit so it might be good to make the tarp half a millimeter shorter or something like that. The covering plate ended up oversized and sticks out 3 cm instead of 2 cm on each side. It was very good to make this prototype and I learned a lot of useful things that will be really important when I'm gonna build the full size boat later on. It turned out surprisingly rigid and folds up super easy. Thank you for watching and hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you in the next part.